Thanks, Brian. As Brian said, I'm the Mercer County Community and Economic Development Director, and uh, I have to be on my A game because that's my future boss here uh, <laughs> after the election. So uh, I work for the county commissioners. Uh, been in the role for 15 years. Um, actually, used to come to the LIA meetings uh, quite a bit, but with the hiring of you all know Teresa Dirksen, um, she's a rock star in everything she does. Working out of our office, uh, it's true community development, it's true economic development, and that's what we'll talk about here in a little bit. But what she does specifically, and she's not here today, and I know she's uh, presented in the past, but when she knew that I was going to come, she gave me some slides so I could go over uh, part of what her uh, report was going to be. But she's she does great. Everything that we've all talked about doing for the last 15 years, she puts into action. You have to have a project manager. You have to have somebody that not just has ideas and uh, works with our team, the LIA team, Lake Restoration team, et cetera, but is the project manager that takes those funds from the state, that the state and us locally invest in projects, and she makes them happen. So um, she, I can't say enough about what she's been able to do over the years, and I'm just gonna briefly talk about some of the, the what she wanted to talk about, updates on, on, on projects uh, let me make sure I didn't go too far. Yeah. Um, and then that I'll lead into what I was asked to talk about, you know, how the impact of a positive lake, a positive trajectory of, of water quality impacts what I do in a community and economic development uh, perspective. And I'll turn it over to Matt and talk about how that impacts, you know, his role of bringing more people here to, to visit, you know, tourism, et cetera. So first with uh, her slides, um, Mercer County Wildlife uh, Area Wetlands, going great when you can see from, from her aerial here, what a great project. Um, that's That's been years in the making. Um, she's put a lot of time into that and you can kind of kind of see, it's gonna take some time for the, like all these wetlands to build up uh, and mature, but what a great what a great asset right there on that side of the lake. Um, obviously, Mercer Wildlife uh, Area Wetlands Phase 2, uh, continuing to uh, develop and, and can, can grow, uh, grow that. Um, again, the impact, and when Stephen Jackman comes uh, to meetings, I know he reports on the impacts of these wetlands and treatment trains. They are, they are profound. They are making a difference, and the state sees that. Obviously, otherwise they want to keep investing money. They want their money to go to things that are having an impact and working, and these most certainly, most certainly are. Um, that was just during construction phases. Just she just wanted you to be able to see different pictures and different angles of, of what what's been done out there. Sometimes, especially in the, the wildlife area, it's not easy for us to go back there and see it, so getting uh, aerial shots are, are important. Uh, Southwest Green Space, that's the one over there where the old, everybody knows where the old South Bay Motel is. That's completed. Um, if you drive past at a certain time, you can see the water uh, flowing into that first uh, main cell there. So that's right on the other side of the wildlife refuge and the stream water, not a huge stream, but that stream water that's able to go through that. We've always talked about creating a backstop or a sponge or whatever you want to call it on each and every one of our streams um, to you know kind of have you know, slow down the water, um, have less nutrients come bellering right into the lake, have it go into these wetlands. And in all cases, they all have been doing great. Uh, Chickasaw Creek stream restoration, that's the latest one. Um, so far so good. I mean, we'd like to expand that. I know she would with more funds. Uh, big check, little check, you know, that whole, that's a big watershed. So the more we can kind of restore it to a natural state, uh, the better that's going to be. Just a couple things. I don't have necessarily a laser here, but just kind of follow along on, on the charts. Um, again, these are things that you see from Stephen Jackman, Dr. Jackman, uh, every, every other month. Um, but really, it's a microsystem toxin number that the trend lines is what we're looking at compared to historical. The projects and the initiatives that have been taken on over the last 12, 15 years are working. That, that first chart there, it, it, that's proof. Um, that top red line is the World Health Organization. Um, that's their criteria of anything below 24, we should be wide open. And if you look this year, the solid line, other than once, we've been under that number. Now I have some disagreements with the state. You know, they decided arbitrarily to lower their level, even though Indiana didn't down to eight and therefore signs still have to stay up at the beach um, every time it gets above eight, whatever. Um, we'll go with World Health Organization in my mind. Um, but even below eight, if you would have told me back in 2010, in the summer, in any summer, that we would have been below eight um, compared to what it was historically, if you look at the dash number, I would have said you're nuts. Um, so what's been going on out here with the dredging, with the wetlands, 
they are working. That gives confidence, not just to all of you and everybody that lives around uh, the lake, but what I'm gonna get to in a second here, investment. Who wants to invest in an area that's not investing in themselves? Who wants to invest in an area where there's doubt or uncertainty related to water quality or whatever it might be? So what Teresa and what the LIA and what the Lake Restoration Commission's been doing has an impact. The numbers are real. You can see all these charts. It's, it's making a difference. And I gotta tell you, that makes my job a million times easier. Um, it's, early on, it was hard to convince somebody to, yeah, buy a house along the lake or build your building here or expand your business here when that, those bad numbers were on the headlines every day in the paper on, I mean, WHIO, all the bad stuff that would come out. How do I do my job and convince, and how does Matt do his job and convince people to come here and, and recreate and enjoy the water and enjoy the community? So I'm telling you, without, I'm getting behind my slides now too, um, without an improved lake for me to do my job as community and economic development, do I want to try to defend what's on the left, the old pictures of what was, or on the right? And I use these pictures in my presentations when I'm trying to encourage somebody to come here, move here, whether it be residential, commercial, retail, or industrial. I use the pictures on the right in my slides. I don't have to defend what's on the left because of the work that's being done. So again, on the community, or on, the, on the economic development side of it, we have a lot of great potential, um, a lot of great, you know, great work ethic, great heritage, a lot of land along the lake in our industrial corridor that I can encourage businesses to come here. Again, without a positive trajectory of a community, that makes that very hard. Since 2009, 2010, We've, if you've been past this now, I mean, we filled uh, several spots. We have businesses coming. We have people uh, creating jobs because, because of things like positive news on the lake. We're getting recognized um, by a lot of uh, different entities that are seeing the growth and the positivity of the, you know, I'm Mercer County, but a Mercer and Glaze County of our region uh, growing. But here in the, specifically, the Ohio State um, just did a uh, completed I guess I would call it a study, um, where they look at real success stories um, of economic prosperity, and they look specifically at two counties in the state of Ohio and compared it to other counties that aren't doing so well. And us in Holmes County, coincidentally, we're always the lowest unemployment rate across the state. So Ohio State did a whole study um, on all the positives uh, from an economic development perspective uh, related to Mercer County. And guess what they mentioned in there many times? Grand Lake and the health of Grand Lake. So that's important to look at. I'm just going to show you just a real quick couple clips of things that I use to market the area. And this was a video, a quick video of uh, when Ferguson decided to come and their per perception of the area when they decided to come. I might have to do this. Initially, we put out a search. We cast our net 100 miles from Indianapolis. Once we got here, we saw the town, we saw the site. It, it, it was one of the most complete Chevrolet sites. I was very, very impressed by how easy it was to locate talent here in this area. We were flooded with responses, and I think it was probably the, one of the quickest higher-ups we've ever had. We actually were able to fill our management team positions in addition to all the positions within the warehouse. There's, there's definitely a great pool of applicants here. So, I guess show the whole video, it's only 30 seconds. Um, but those guys weren't from this area, and they've said, oh, is there enough people to, to hire? Is there enough people that we can employ here? Um, again, if people didn't want to live here, people didn't want to buy houses here, et cetera, it makes it hard to convince somebody of that. So that was just one quick video. I'll show you another real quick snippet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you might be coming to this, but I'd uh, like to hear your comments about uh, housing shortages and if you want to get more people to be hireable you gotta have some place for them to live what, what, what's your view about that huge problem um, I spend a lot of time on housing um, Salina we just uh, have an apartment complex just recently last year built um, over there by the by the uh, Fox, or the Lynx golf course um, we need more of that but it's hard to convince somebody to develop something like that with interest rates the way they are, with inflation the way it is, with building materials, um, I think the need is there. And right now to try to convince somebody to buy a house at the values that they are, 
um, with the mortgage rates that they are, that's tough. If we had more apartment complexes like that, where they could move into, I say temporarily until things kind of settle out, at least we've got them here, then they can buy or build a house when one comes available. Yes, so we definitely have a housing shortage. It's a good problem to have. We got people that want to move here. Again, if the lake was in bad shape and nobody wanted to move here, there'd be a lot of homes for sale and wouldn't have to worry about housing problems. It's a good problem to have, but we need more. So if you know anybody that wants to develop apartments or housing, We'll take them. I'll talk to them. So, um, and again, it, it is a place that people, I think, um, whoops, that, that do want to live. Um, I don't think I can click on that video. It doesn't show, but the top video would have been, a, it's called Viewpoint with Dennis Quaid. So that op, that um, company came to us last year and um, it's on YouTube. So you can always click on it and look at it that way too on our website. Um, but they came to us and said, we are targeting rural Midwestern communities that we want to tell their story. And they came out here last year and we did a series of videos with them. Dennis Quaid does the introduction. It's on PBS. Um, it's on, I think it was a small commercial on CNBC where they're highlighting the Mercer County region. Um, very similar to the other video I showed, you know, the things to do and, and Matt will show his video, the things there are to do that the appreciation that we have, um, we're trying to send that message out to across the country to get more people to say, wow, what a, you know, as the, as the world gets a little crazier every day, this place is something to, to talk about. And uh, that's what that viewpoint with Dennis Quaid, it's been on PBS running uh, over the last year. They do like little infomercials and it's about a five minute video just on Mercer County. So we're proud of that, um, but you could have something to be proud of. And we're very, very proud of the lake, the lake improvement, all the things that goes on in this area because of the hard work of everybody pulling together and taking what could have been a pretty bad situation for everybody um, and turning it into um, quite the success story. A lot of work to do. I'm sure as Stephen tells you that every, every other month, there's a lot of work to do, but there's no doubt, you know, all the types of pictures that we like to promote and show events today, Brian's talking about all the things that are going on just today. Uh, those are picture taking opportunities um, most certainly, but it's, it's awesome. It's all these things to do in this area because we have a, a healthier lake than we did, you know, 12, 15 years ago. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Matt and talk about the tourism side of, of a healthy lake. You wanna just put back up? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Perfect. Thanks, Jared. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Um, what a beautiful morning. Um, it's mornings like this, I think, that remind us how lucky we are to, to live here uh, and be able to enjoy this lake every day. If you know my story, uh, I grew up on the south side of the lake. My parents still live in the shadow of the Franklin Township Fire Department um, and uh, were there quite a bit uh, enjoying the bike trails uh, in Franklin Township. Um, I've been in the tourism industry in different capacities for over a decade. Um, and wherever I go, I'm always struck um, by people who sort of don't um, fully grasp the impact that visitors have uh, on, on their areas, the benefits that they bring. Um, it's sort of lost on them, and, and they don't really realize it until it's gone. And we did lose it 15 years ago. Um, the, the water quality was not where it needed to be. Visitors weren't coming, um, and that crisis marshaled this group, the state, Jared, I mean, everyone to solve this problem. And uh, we're now starting to reap the benefits of those investments. Um, what we, we're a, we're, we as a CVB, we're a marketing organization. Our job is to go out to Columbus, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Detroit, tell our story, tell, uh, show folks um, what we have to offer get them to come here and spend their hard-earned money um, here. So these are just a couple examples of um, some of the pieces of marketing that we have out right now. These are banner ads that are on ohiomagazine.com. They're digital billboards. If you've been down on the south side of Dayton, um, on, uh, right on I-75 if you're coming back north. Um, this is a billboard. Brian loves this one. This is a billboard we have in Indian Lake uh, for those folks who you know, typically might come from Columbus and they stop there. We want them to keep coming. We want them to keep coming. And anecdotally, um, this summer we've had so many people um, who have stopped in at the visitor center at the state park who have said, we typically go to Buckeye Lake 
or we go to Indian Lake, but this year we came to Grand Lake. We've never been here before, and what you guys have here is amazing. I can't tell you how many times uh, myself and Jenny, who's in our office, uh, have heard that from people, so um, it's really exciting to see. You might be saying, though, Matt, what, like, what are we talking about here? What kind, of, what kind of actual impact are these people having on our community? And the state of Ohio provides that data to us. So they partner the State Tourism Office, the Department of Development. They partner with a company called Oxford Economics, who every two years will go out and, and analyze from tax receipts, business filings, all that stuff the actual economic impact that visitors are having in counties across Ohio. So sort of the highlights, this might be hard to see, but um, on an annualized basis, $267.9 million of economic impact in both Mercer and Auglaize counties. Over a quarter of a billion dollars every year is tied directly to people coming to this area, spending the night at hotels, uh, eating dinner here, buying gas here, shopping here. Um, that's not a small amount of money. That, that, that is injected in our economy every single year. Um, 3,264 jobs are supported just by visitor spending alone in Mercer and Oglace County. That's over 5.5% of our total private employment, all jobs. So if, if, if all that visitor spending went away, think of the, how, of the unemployment rate going up 5.5% just from visitor spending. Um, visitor activity generated a total of $77.5 million in direct household income in Mercer and Auglaize County. And visitor spending generated $34.1 million in tax revenue. And this is a good one. I, again, a lot of people really probably don't realize this, but when visitors come here, they share our tax burden, right? So when they come here and they're shopping, they're paying sales taxes to pay for things like our jail and everything else that sales taxes fund. Um, if they buy a home here, uh, they're paying property taxes that fund uh, a, a local school district or fund the county. Um, if all of that visitor spending went away and all the taxes generated by visitors coming here stopped, each household would have to pay another almost $500 to maintain the same level of services that we're having, that we, that we get right now. So those visitors are actually lowering our taxes here as locals. That's a great story. That's great that those people are coming here, they're investing their dollars to enjoy our lake and enjoy what we have, um, and they're paying taxes here. That's a good thing. Um, so that's a total cumulative look at both Mercer and Auglaize County. Um, we, we do have data from, uh, from both counties, and uh, this is probably going to be, I'm going to just take this. This is probably really hard to see, um, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll look at Auglaize County first. Um, of the two counties, it is the larger um, of, the, of the tourism economies um, here in the two-county region. So. Um, visitors contributed a direct impact of $108.6 million in Auglaize County in 2023. Um, that was total direct spending. Uh, the total economic impact was $180.8 million. So um, from, uh, 20, in 2021, that number was $107 million. In 2023, that number was $108.6 million. So it's growing at about a 2% rate. Um, below the, the average, um, uh, but still we're moving in the right direction. What, what I find interesting though is when we look at Mercer County, Mercer County's uh, total tourism economy is smaller than Auglaize County, so uh, total direct spending generated $87.1 million in economic impact last year in Mercer County. However, if you look at uh, the sales growth trajectory, um, in 2021, it was $43.5 million. Last year, it was $51.7 million, so almost a, greater than a 15% increase. So we're seeing the tourism economy grow faster um, in Mercer County, and you know, I don't think it's lost on anyone, all the development that's happened on the west side of the lake with Boardwalk Village, um, all of those investments in downtown Salina, uh, all of those things are paying dividends 
in Mercer County. Uh, those, so those things are working for us, and we're seeing the tourism economy grow faster um, in Mercer County as well. Uh, like Garrett was talking about, the state of Ohio is recognizing this. So this is um, from the Department of Development, Tourism Ohio's website. They're realizing um, the what's sort of called the halo effect that tourism has on an area. The best way, and Jared I'm sure would agree with this, the best way that we can get people interested in starting a business here, um, living here, sending their kids to school here, going to college uh, at our universities, um, is to get them to visit. Um, so we have to get them here, understand what sort of assets that we have, the kind of life that they can build here. The best way to do that is to be here on the ground, see it, feel it, touch it. Um, and the state has really started marketing Ohio as a place where if, you can, if we can get them here to visit, they understand quality of life is high here, uh, cost of living is affordable compared to bigger markets like New York and California, et cetera. Um, and so we're adopting sort of, yeah? Well, uh, the uh, lake was built as a reservoir for the Miami Erie Canal. Mm -hmm. And so would you talk about uh, your relationship with the Heritage Trails Park District and the uh, development of the Mockingbob property and the national uh, and state trails that are on the towpath north of St. Mary's? Uh, again, anecdotally, it's a great question. One of the things that we get asked about all the time at the visitor center is where can we bike, where can we hike, where are trails? Um, uh, one of the, if, if there were any, one of the benefits of COVID is people wanted to be outside more. Um, they rediscovered um, sort of, um, you know, enjoying the natural world a little bit more and um, people are cycling more, they're RVing more, they're camping more. So outdoor recreation as a whole, uh, is growing, um, and we certainly want to continue to see those investments made um, in our area. We're very excited that Heritage Trails um, uh, was able to pass their levy, that that was formed, um, and as they continue to uh, build their comprehensive plan and, and, and move forward, that uh, you know we're sure that trails are going to be uh, going to be a big part of that. Is there a website we can go to, to that shows a picture or location or a map? Yeah, we have some of that on, on, on our website, seymour.org. Um, uh, seymour.org. Seymour.org. S-E-E-M-O-R-E.org. Um, we have trail brochures um, in, the, in the visitor center as well. Um, we're happy to, you know, we, we, those go all over the place, but uh, if you need some, we, we can definitely get some to you as well. Um, but that's, that's definitely part of what we do as the CVB uh, to get that out. We have those uh, sort of the overlook of our trails in our visitor's guide, in, in that printed hiking and biking trail guide that we do as well, as well as on our website too. So, yep, great questions. Um, so again, like Jared said, um, we, if you saw, if you were at Boardwalk Fest on Saturday, you, you might have seen a drone flying around. We were there for about four hours. Um, shooting a little bit um, and uh, this is not the commercial itself this is just sort of an overview like a hype video if you will um, for our commercial um, but uh, we were able, so this is sort of hopefully gives you a flavor of uh, the kind of marketing that we're going to be uh, putting forward in 2025 to promote that spring and summer season so let's see if I can get this to play <laughs> Again, anecdotally, we have so many people who come in and, and are just amazed at the amenities that we have on the west and north side of the lake there, um, and that it's all so close and compact and so close to downtown Salina. Um, and so we, want, we definitely want to show that off uh, to people. So 
Um, this commercial is in development right now. Um, we'll launch it in the spring. You'll see that on YouTube and on Hulu and Prime Video and all that good stuff. So, um, but again, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a flavor of, of the kind of direction we're going with our marketing and showcasing what we have to offer here as well. Um, and so, I, you know, I want to sort of close with, you know, again, echoing what Jared was saying. These are the sort of images that we're going to market with and promoting uh, the lake and promoting Mercer and Anglaise counties with. Um, and these uh, images don't have the same impact if the quality of the lake is not where it is right now. And that's because of the work of what you all do um, and the investments, like Jared was saying, that the state's made and, and, and the county and local officials have made. Um, the, the fact that this lake is, has improved so much uh, in the last 15 years uh, is, a, is a, you know, again, a testament to all the work that you guys have done. And we're seeing those benefits uh, when we look at the numbers. Um, and so as we continue to move forward, like Jared said, the work's never done. There's always more to do. Um, but uh, as we continue to go talk about how amazing our area is, I just want to thank all of you for all the work that you do, um, and we're going to continue to uh, to grow and, and, and show people uh, how amazing this area is. Do you have more? Any other questions? Questions, questions for us? Yeah, we're happy to take questions. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was just curious. Um, I know when I when we're out on the lake, we see these uh, groups of boats anchored. I want to call them a boat beach or something like that. Um, is that part of Grand Lake? I mean, is that a designated spot that they've they've created? And Are you talking about Boaters Beach? Is that what yeah, you mean? Yeah, Boaters Beach. Is that is that what it is? Yeah, it's sort of like an informal, um, you know, kind of gathering place for a lot of that a lot of people have discovered. So yeah. yeah. Negative news sells faster. You know, WHO didn't do us any help. You know, over the years, where they they, they always focus on pictures from ten years ago, and they focus on one sample that come that comes in above eight, and because the state has to put a sign up, yeah. like, like I said, WHO, you know, World Health Organization versus what Ohio has, then the news dwells on that. Well, it's eight point one. They got to put a sign up. It must be bad. It's all in context, you know. Yeah. States next to us, I guarantee you, aren't even testing some of their lakes or ponds, and their microsystem toxin level is probably higher than 24, and people don't think about that at all. But yet, we're burdened by past and history and negative news. So I just think it takes all of us to continue to say, yeah. what's what's relative? There's risk in anything you do. You drive 56 miles per hour, is that more dangerous than 55 miles per hour? There's, there's relative risk in anything you do. I would recommend to anybody, if you swim in an untreated body of water, even if that's a pond, take a shower when you're done, and don't drink it. That's common sense. <laughs> and you'll be fine. How many people have reported illnesses or rashes over the last how many years? And that's lakes being used all the time. Boaters Beach, people in the waist high water for eight hours or however many hours they're in there. We're fine. It's all relative. But people get focused on, and or, news organizations get focused on numbers. Oh, 8.2, it must be bad, run for the hills. That's hard to overcome from uh, news organizations that like to focus on the negative. So it takes all of us, Facebook and all that social media and everything that's doing to try to overcome that. But it is a challenge because you're right. Your friends and neighbors and dating myself, oh my gosh, you, I mean, Steve, here, you hear it in Cincinnati too. You know, oh my, should we? Can we touch no, the I water? Thinking, yes. Yeah, I was thinking more along the lines of, you know, you're doing a lot of advertising, you're showing people at these mm -hmm. fancy, you know, fancy places and stuff like that. Why not show a picture of Boater's Beach with people in the water? Mm -hmm. I mean, it might, yeah. <laughs> showing pictures of people in the water might help out, help 
And you have back you have plenty of drone footage. Yeah, we do. Of yeah, it's Bozo coming. Beach. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Yep. We'll work our way around. Um, I'll come back to you in a second. I think he has a hand up next. You talking about economic impact? You said direct spending. Is that if I'm a tourist and I give a dollar to the local restaurant, that's direct spending? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Direct spending, yes, is that. So the visitor coming in, the money that he spends to to buy a hotel room, that's direct spending. So it, it's, it's split up in three buckets, direct spending, indirect spending, and induced spending. That creates the total economic impact. Direct spending is what I just said. Indirect spending is if you go buy a hotel room, that hotel has to hire staff uh, to turn the room over, make sure you have a great experience. That's indirect spending. They're paying those people. Those people are going and buying groceries, etc. Induced spending then is uh, those businesses have to buy supplies. If you're a restaurant, you've got to buy uh, you're buying meat from a local farmer, etc. All of that whole umbrella is that total economic That's impact number. Two hundred eighty million dollars a year. Yep, yep. All that. Uh, that's that whole bucket. And how much is actual direct spending? Is that thirty-three million? You said something. Or? Um. So in all Glace County, it's one hundred eight point six million. That's actual. Cash that's direct spending. Okay. In Mercer County, it's $51.7 million. Yep. Great question. Yeah. Yeah. I have a place that cozy, but I live across the line in Randolph County in Winchester. I'm the former economic director over there, so I understand exactly what you're talking about on your job and the challenges of it. And then when you're talking about marketing and going to Indianapolis, you do not market enough to your border county neighbors. The six counties from Fort Wayne down, those people all think they need to go to Brookville or the northern Indiana Lakes, and there is nothing there that even compares to what's here at Grand Lake. I am asked every week, how, how is the water over there? She's exactly right. Pickers of voters beat Pusso and that the phones, but here, here's what's going on. And it's easy to tell a story when you come over here, but you gotta get people to come over here. We have more and more people that are people I know that are members here of the Salina Moose, and it's a great facility, and it's a great marketing thing, and is very affordable for people that want to join an organization and so forth. And there's, you can you can join this moose and go to every moose in, in the world. So that that's a big advantage. But you, the thing is, to me, just my opinion again, going to Columbus and Indianapolis are great. But Muncie, Indiana, and Dayton, Ohio would be a lot of more effective money for your dollars because those people, I leave, I leave Winchester, I left this morning at whatever, it takes me 50 minutes to get on my boat and I'm on the water and I'm enjoying things. And those are the people that, you know, can be here right away that know very little about what's going on over here. And that's where, to me, again, my, the message needs to be, and the, one of the proofs of that is with Indianapolis. We have in Indianapolis what we call, in Indiana, what we call the donut counties. They're the eight counties around Indianapolis. They get everything in Indiana because they're that proximity to Indianapolis. Again, if you do the same thing with Mercer County and do your donut counties, I think you'll draw a lot more because a lot of these people are still not educated on what the great facility you have here at Grand Lake. Yeah, uh, I, I agree 100%. Um, you know, our budget is is a, is a certain level where we've got to be selective. If you look at the data that we have, Dayton, Ohio is our number one market, um, for sure. Um, that's where we pull the most visitors uh, from is Dayton. And then it's sort of Cincinnati is number two, Columbus is number three. Um, but yeah, the more that we can hit those neighboring counties, uh, especially those in Indiana, Muncie, Fort Wayne, um, Auburn, over to Indianapolis, that's we would we, we want to continue to grow that way. So as our budget continues to, to hopefully get you know a little bit larger, um, we can do that. Two more questions over here. Yeah, I think the uh, in Dayton has always been a source of real estate sales on uh, Grand Lake St. Mary's. Uh, I live in the south side of the lake, southeast corner, Greenswood Shores. Uh, across the road from me, uh, uh, a truck slammer from Troy just sold a truck slammer from Kettering. So how did they hear about it? So 
they heard about it from somebody else that says, you know, you ought to have a place up there. And, uh, you ought to get it before the prices go up I mean, even higher. So, um, <laughs> the place they bought, I thought needed to be torn down because it has a basement on a channel. And there's no way you're ever going to keep it dry. But they bought it, uh, and they're happy to be there. But I think the word that effective in uh, Dayton, don't know about Indiana. Uh, I don't go across that border if I can avoid it. Well, that's really not very nice. Six thousand dollars over here. Question. Uh, Steve. Steve has a question here. Yeah. Um, if the number that drives people's view of the lake is being, you know, clean and clear, is not going to change. So you have to put the sign up and it's at eight. Um, I have a couple of questions about that. One is. I'm wondering how much that level is actually, you know, is that, like, you know, what's the detection limit? I mean, eight, eight micrograms is so freaking low that I have to, I have to wonder, you know, whether or not that is a goal, whether or not we'll ever really, quote, get there. You know what I mean? Whether we'll ever get there. So if we're not going to get there and the state won't, the Department of Health won't change it, then if you're going to, market the area, you've got to put your pictures into and, and do a media campaign with the Boaters Beach and people on jet skis and everything and advertising that we are consistently under the World Health Organization standard if people ask. Because I, I don't know that we're ever going to right. have a summer where we don't have signs up on a somewhat regular basis. Right. Just because you get a, a one one sample in one week, and then you're stuck. Throw the baby out the bathwater at that point, and and I think we as a region are able to do that. Where it gets a little sticky is, you know, Brian used to be the state park manager. He was an Ohio DNR employee, so he and the state park have to be careful because their echelon of, of management is saying eight, hey, whether he likes it or we like it or not. So we got to find a way around that. If the state's not going to change that eight uh, up, then we have to mark it in a way, because it is still a state lake, so we have to be careful on that. Um, but we can be creative in marketing, like you said, show pictures of people swimming and, and, and use graphics that show World Health Organization and, and show charts. We just got to find a way around it to kind of work through that, because you're right. One bad sample, oh my God, it's 8.1, run for the hills. You can't have I mean, all the effort and all the marketing that we do to it, and somebody reads a, a news release that says it's 8.2, you know, that's such a small number, um, and, it, and it gets them, it puts that fear of God into them unnecessarily. And we could talk at length about other things in the wastewater world or water world. It's the same thing, you know, oh my God, arsenic's so high. Well, let's well, take it all the relative. The problem yeah. is um, um, the 8 is an advisory level from U.S. It's a recommendation. It's a recommendation. Right, right. So it's completely optional for the Department of Health to, right. to implement that. Um, but somehow it went from being a recommendation to the uh, Department of Health making it into a rule. Yep. So that rather than recommending that counties post the sign, they made it a rule. Yep. Which isn't consistent with EPA's recommendation statement, which is it's a recommendation. It's a recommendation. Right, so what I'm wondering is whether um, there might be some way to deal with it. I don't, to be honest with you, I don't think you're ever going to have a summer um, without se several weeks because the eight is so I would agree. low. So, I would agree. so you know, the question is whether or not the Department of Health would be willing to make it a requirement above 24 and optional above eight is for the beach side. That's been on our that's been on our agenda every two weeks, every month when we meet as a Lake Restoration Commission, we have the Department of Health on there. And unfortunately they have not participated in our monthly meetings like they used to. Other things in their mind must be going on. But that stays on our agenda every month to say so yeah, we might need to continue to figure out a way to she's gonna run for governor. If she wants to run for governor <laughs> then she's not gonna get a vote. <laughs> 
Amy Atkin wants to run for governor, so uh, yeah, so if she wants to run for governor to get any money out of these counties or any votes, she needs to be open to. Uh, well, she's no longer the health. She's no longer Department of Health. Um, she's gone. She's the one that put that rule in, I know. but we haven't been able to uh, get that altered yet. So um, we'll keep talking on that, but that's definitely definitely important. So um, yeah, in the back and then yeah. I noticed you got the red CD picture in there that uh, triggered basically the uh, marketplace that to yep. basically become a stigmatized yep. marketplace. So when you look at uh, how to fix that, you know, every newspaper article in the world was, was focused on the, the algae for how long. But when you look at what happened to the real estate values, you can, you, you've got a measurable line to follow with that. That line that dropped from like you know five hundred thousand dollar house to a two hundred thousand dollar house, that's a measurable line of consumer confidence on, on what's being done on the overall lake. All right. So when you look at that, you've got the line that probably stayed flat for five years, but starts going back up, and, and, and now it's, it's it's on a good incline. All right. That's, for sure. that's something that could probably be marketed because consumer confidence is the ultimate drive. Of out. And property valuations have most certainly right. And the only line you can correlate with that is the real estate values. Right. All right. So you know, looking at that, where it's at now versus where it was 13 years ago, actually 15 years ago, and, then 10 years ago, and then. Now. And I can't speak for all of this, but I've spoken to our county auditor Randy Greitner about that specific and, and the data and analytics that go behind that as well. So yeah, I, I think that's a very, a very good, it's good and balanced line. Yeah. Because you just use the marketplace and just change the, the, the dates in it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, another question that I know you have one over there too. Just for comparison, what is what's the microsystem level at uh, Lake Larmy or Indian Lake or the Ohio River? Yeah. So maybe that's a. That's see, they don't you're test. Getting just, you're getting us just one point, <laughs> and you can't judge anything on just one point. The hard part is though. What triggered it back in, Brian may be talking this better than I can, back in 2008, 2009, required testing. The other lakes haven't been triggered. They don't have testing. So you don't test somebody's pond. You're not testing at Lake Barbie right now. You're not testing Ohio River right now. They were testing in certain spots at Lake Erie. Um, but yeah, we're stuck in that, well, we have to test Grand Lake, but yeah, it's, and I'm not trying to get any other lake into trouble at all, but if you go to another lake somewhere, and just out of scientific curiosity, start testing microcystin toxin, I think people would be shocked on what those would do. That. Why don't you just go over there with Lyle and, and go to the, do the testing? You <laughs> 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 make some enemies. Because like I said, one point of one point is not a reference. I mean, it, it doesn't get you anything with one point. You know, yeah. if I told you I played the game last night and I scored 300 points, you know that's good or bad. Well, I mean, there is reference in, in Lake Erie with what they, they're going through, and, and what other lake, um, Kaiser Lake maybe? There's been a few others, but, but not around here, you know, Indian Lake, uh, Fort Lake Army, et cetera. You know, there is no necessary point of reference. But to compare, you know, obviously Lake Erie with what they've been going through with their harmful algal bloom on the, on the western basin, I mean, there is data. Um, what I've always had a hard time with was, you know, like the, the beaches up at Cedar Point. Okay, so they would test maybe downstream somewhere and have a have a high number and have to post something there, but the whole Lake Erie obviously is not posted. Whereas Grand Lake, because we get our water out of the out of the lake, you know, through Salina, they take a sample and that's what triggers postings and things like that. So we're kind of stuck in that rut of having to test. And I agree with Stephen. You know, you're gonna we're gonna be in that. We're not gonna get out of that cycle of testing, testing, testing. Yeah, okay, go ahead. But his point's a good one. That if other people we compete against for the tourism dollars are not on the same playing field with us because they're not doing the testing, and, and if everybody was treated the same and we all had to do it, I, my feeling is we're going to have these numbers all over the place, and people will see this is really not a big deal. This is not right. a Grand Lake St. Mary. Right. I mean, if, if, else, if, if, if he's right, if if the, the we have to do it here and others are not required to do it, then that's a problem that we need to deal with at the state level. If nothing else, you can take those numbers to the state and say, look, why are we being punished and they're not? Right. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't you know, make those numbers public to embarrass other lakes. Right. Just, just <laughs> right. take it to the state people and say, look, 
Here's what we tested at Lake Laramie. Here's what we tested at the Indian Lake. Here's what the Ohio River is. Why are we so singled out? This well, sounds like getting all the grant money because they're not testing all the other lights. So, I mean, if they start testing all the other lights, <laughs> that's true. That's a good point. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know what you're saying, and I agree with, with both of you. It's, it's, I'm a county employee, he's a CBB employee. You know, what jurisdiction do we have at the state lake or other state lakes? I know what you're saying. I'm not sure what. The LIA is not associated with anybody. The LRC. I don't keep using rationality here. This is the government. <laughs> <laughs> There's That's no science behind it. There's That's no science behind it. That's a good point. <laughs> well, anybody could have done it. Anybody check out of that data and give it to you, and you can go to them and say, look, this is what we found. Yeah. She makes a good point, though. The money that I've seen in the last year, the state and everybody toward this lake has been amazing. And we need to fix it. We need money to fix it. You're right. Um, it is. It is. It has been a fine line. We we want to promote. We want to compare to other lakes, but we still have a lot of work, a lot of work to do. There's still microcysts and toxins. There's still algae. So we don't want to. Teresa has a lot of projects on her docket that she wants to continue to work on. And you're right. We do need state money. So it, it's about. And and I guess we've been working for 15 years. We'll get there over the next 10, 15 years in one way, shape, form, or the other. But I think your point is very valid. So, yep, and then yep. Well, might be a possibility of having the university students take that on as a project of testing other lights and comparison. I mean, we have that, we have that right state campus as part of the lake and use, utilize it. They, they could possibly do that as a project and say, you know, we can go to these regional lakes and do the testing because he has a he, he knows what he's doing on that. So. Yep. Yeah, I mean, they could do Kaiser, Buckeye, Laramie, all the lakes within like a 50 to 100 mile radius around here and do it like during the same week when we're all under the same temperatures and right. you know, turnover of water scenario. And not trying to exploit you them. Results right. that you can actually compare. And I don't know why kids couldn't do that in college as part of uh, Program. Scientific curiosity. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what I was going to ask you is, if, so we're stuck with A, and we're, we're slowly getting there, but I don't know if we're going to truly get there. Are there any creeks feeding into the lake right now that are that you know are still a large source of nutrients and do not have either a current wetland project or one in the offing? and you really need to get one from a large contributor no i mean we're she's she's buttoned most of them up um we'd like to have more you know more more on a single stream like in Corda creek we have multiple um you know uh, stations if you will within that treatment train um i know she's looking at barnes creek this coming next year I'd like to do more at the big chick big chick chickasaw creek um, I'd say there's always more to do, and there's always okay, need for more money. Wise, yeah. Is cold water the biggest? Piece yes. Of uh, cold water, Chickasaw. I think it's Chickasaw. Big Chick is the biggest, okay. and then I mean, cold water. The reason I ask that if you drive up here in the summertime, which I'm coming up from the south, and you come by cold water, cold water creek where it crosses what, 127, I mean, it's shocking how bright green it is, a significant part of the summer. And it makes me wonder, where are their nutrient reduction programs up in that watershed all the way to St. Henry? Do we have any there that are dropping that nutrient level yes. down? And, and it's it's tangible. It's, it's You can see that. On, and again, I'm not here to give all those numbers. But uh, yeah. soil and water and everybody, I mean, it is a marketable. So we can talk about wetlands and dredging and all the positive things that are being done. But there's a lot of work being done up in the watershed that has reducing it. Now the, the colors and you know it's especially in the summertime there's not a lot of water flowing through Quarter Creek yeah. so the Quarter Creek the, the, the treatment train right there um, that pump is pumping out um, out of the creek so in a sense it's pulling water back it's not going to change the color you know overnight but to answer your question yeah there's a ton of work being done up in the watershed by producers by soil and water by everybody to help reduce the amount of nutrients coming to us in the first place and then multiple backstops hopefully more that help slow it down even further and then remove it out of the bottom of the lake via dredging 
All of those things have made a remarkable difference on that chart that you see it down, like I said, if you would have told me 10, 15 years ago, we'd be anywhere near eight in the summer, I would have said you're nuts. I mean, they were in the 120 at some point. Does, uh, do, do all your farmers above a certain acreage who have land that, that is adjoining any of these creeks, are they, are they mandated, do they have to have or implement buffer zones? Yeah, they all have nutrient management plans. They're all working through that. All, all of them. Nutrient all of them in the watershed. Okay. Yep. Well, they probably were not about the question. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the fact that you have it, I mean, is yeah. there a... Yeah, understood. Yeah, we don't monitor that. Is that soil and water conservation? I mean, who, yes. who makes sure that the farmers are abiding by... Yeah, uh, those organizations are. Rather than throwing a piece of paper up on the, on the, on the table and then ignoring it. I, I've seen a big deal. I mean, I, I'm proud of the work that they're doing. I mean, yeah, there's, you're always going to have a few instances, and those are usually ones that you know make the news, et cetera. But I'm impressed overall with how well people have come together. I mean, you come to these meetings 15 years ago, and people were at each other's throats. I don't sense that anymore. Um, so, all right. Oh, so we have one last just question. A, just a quick question. Do you think that? Um, that we're in a position where, or is it too soon with kind of everything that's going on to really be able to say, hey, come and do a story on us because we are we need, we need, we need to get the- You mean like Channel 7 or something like that? Yeah, or something like that. Just to say, hey, you know, we got this and we're, you know, this is why we're under, you know, right. A is this number, but this is the, you know, a different number and being able to do that kind of stuff. I mean, is it too soon to do that because we're still working on a lot of things? I, I mean, I, I I would point to the numbers, yeah. you know, the tourism impact numbers, and I would I would point them to the west side of the lake and, and yeah. places like Boardwalk Village. And, and, and if, if the lake wasn't healthy and the trajectory wasn't good, those investments wouldn't be being made, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. You know, and, I, mean, and I didn't know. I mean, it, it might be worth saying, "Hey, come and come and talk to us. We need some help." Well, and like Jared said, you yeah. know, negativity sells. You know, yeah, they I they'll know they they'll come when it's bad. They yeah. won't come when it's good. They always have one good story. Yeah. Okay, so maybe it can be all <laughs> that's true. Or something. I don't know. Yeah. What what is your Facebook page? What is the Facebook page that Jenny posts all the good stuff? Yeah, if you uh, we're we're obviously on all the socials. Facebook's probably the best one to go to. If you just search Grand Lake Region Visitor Center, uh, you'll find you'll find all of our stuff there. And again, our website Seymour.org. Okay.